Uh, my name is Birge Wik, and I work as a software developer at Sopra Stereo. Uh, over the last year, I've been on a client project where we have uh, used Azure Blueprints to govern our cloud environments. Um, so today, that's what we're going to take a look at, and uh, I'm going to do a little bit of theory before I move on to do a live demo where we'll deploy a web app using Azure Blueprints. So, let's see, is this in the way? When I say cloud environments, that can mean a lot of things. Maybe it's a web app, or maybe you need some place to store your data, so you have a storage account, or any other Azure resource. And maybe you need access control, who's got permissions to, to uh, touch your data, or touch your Azure resources. And you're probably going to have more than that, just one environment. Maybe you want one for every developer on the team. Maybe you need a testing and production environment. So if you're going to set that up all manually, that could potentially be, uh, be painful. So you're going to want some, some way to govern that, uh, those cloud environments. You're going to want to standardize it. If not, you're, you'll be very likely to introduce some differences in your, uh, between your environments, and uh, it's going to take a long time to set it up. So this is where Azure Blueprints come in. I like to think of Azure Blueprints as I think of the blueprint of a building. You have a set of drawings. They define the specifications that you need in order to construct a building. And in the same way, an Azure Blueprint is a set of JSON documents that define the specifications that you need in order to create your cloud environment. So they're just JSON files, and they can contain any Azure resource, but they can also contain role-based access control or policies. Maybe you want your resources to be deployed into a certain Azure region, uh, like Northern Europe or Norway then you can have your blueprints enforce that policy. So let's look at how you go from having a set of JSON files into getting actual resources in Azure. Uh, and I'm, this is the flow that I'm gonna show you on the demo as well. So you're gonna start off by creating your blueprint. You put everything you need in there, your resources, the policies, uh, or the role-based access control if you need that, and you create it. And it's going to exist in Azure as a draft of your blueprint. So the next step is going to be to publish your blueprint. And when you publish it, you get a blueprint that you can actually deploy, and it's going to have a version. So if you later on want to change your blueprint, then you can do that. You just publish it with a different version. The next step is to actually assign your blueprint, which is the same as deploying it. And this is a repeatable step. You can do this over and over again and get all the environments that you need, like your development environments and production environment. All right. So these two pictures here are taken from the files that I'm going to be using in the demo. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the structure here because the blueprint is comprised of two different files. You have the blueprint file, and then you have artifacts. So the blueprint file, like we can see in the picture in the left here, it's the blueprint.json file. This is where you can define properties on the blueprint. Um, and then there's the artifacts. Uh, these are your actual resources. I got three of them here in the right picture. Um, we have the web app, uh, an app service plan, which sort of takes care of cost and compute size for the web app. And I also have a role assignment. I'm going to assign myself as the owner of these resources. I like to keep the artifacts in a separate folder that I just call artifacts. That's kind of clean and tidy. All right. Let's, uh, let's go on to the demo and take a deeper look. I'm going to leave my presentation here and open up Visual Studio Code. So as you can see here on the left, I have uh, my blueprint files, the artifacts here and the blueprint.json. 
but I also have a couple of PowerShell scripts. And I'll, I'll get to those in a minute. Let's start off by looking at the Blueprint file here. So I have, um, as I said, this is where you can define properties on the Blueprint. And you can also put in parameters. And I have, a, I have three parameters here. I have a name for each of the resources, and I also have an object ID, which uh, I'm gonna use it in the role assignment. I've also defined the resource group that I'm gonna put all the resources in, and I can reference all of these parameters inside of my artifacts. Let's look at the web app artifact. So it's a pretty standard JSON file. I'm gonna describe some of, some of the fields here. Let's uh, start with this one, the template. Everything inside of the template field is actually an ARM template. And ARM templates are Azure's Way, native way of declaratively provisioning Azure resources. I know those are some large, big words, uh, but I'm not gonna go into more detail on ARM templates. Uh, if we go further down, we can see the resource group that I defined in my blueprint. I'm referencing that here. And we can also see the blueprint parameters that I'm mapping in here, and I'm using those in my, in my template here. So if I look at the app service plan, it's very similar. It's just a different resource. And uh, the role assignment is a little bit different. It's got a uh, quid here that's uh, defining the type of role. This is the quid for the owner role. And I'm mapping in my, my uh, object ID, which is the object ID for my user in Azure and it's gonna be scoped to the resource group. All right, so these are the files that we need, but we're gonna to have to create the blueprint somehow and provision the resources. And for that, we're going to use PowerShell. Uh, it can be done in other ways too. You can do it directly in the portal or, or use the API, uh, but we're gonna use PowerShell. And I have these two scripts here. I have a create blueprint script and an assign blueprint script. I'm gonna open those up in PowerShell and uh, run them from there. So I have my script here. Uh, before I run it, I'm gonna go into the Azure portal a little bit and uh, go to blueprints. This is where, if I go into blueprint definitions, this is where all of my blueprints are going to end up. Right now I don't have anyone, so let's do something about that. So this script is going to import my files with this line here, and it's going to create the blueprint draft in, in Azure. And the last line here is going to publish it with version one, so let's run it. If we go back into Azure and click on refresh a few times, it should end up, end up here. Eventually, here it is. It's got the draft version and eventually here it is, it's published. It's got version one. Version can be anything really. Uh, I used a day, uh, today's date and a, a build reference uh, in my client project, but here I just chose one. So it's found my artifacts. Uh, they're under resource group and they're under a subscri subscription. So the next step is going to be to assign the blueprint. And I'm gonna do that by using my other PowerShell script here. Let's take a look at it. Pay attention to, uh, to the blueprint parameters here. I can actually set those at runtime. And so I'm gonna give my web app a name, an app service plan a name, and I'm gonna add a tag to it just to specify that this is a, a certain environment and I'm gonna call it dev for development. I have, a, I have a few other parameters too up here, a name for the blueprint, a name for the assignment, and I'm gonna run this line at the bottom here. It's gonna take in all of those parameters and uh, start provisioning my resources. So let's run it. If I go back into the portal now, I can navigate to assign blueprints. And the assignment should eventually show up here. 
let's see. Here it is. I click into it. We can see the provisioning state here. So uh, this usually takes a couple of minutes. So uh, let's review what we just did. We created the blueprint. It was it ended up in Azure as a draft, and then it got published. And now we've started assigning the blueprint, the published version. And so now it's found my resource group. It's found it found the role here. Uh, it used the object ID of my of myself. Uh, it's the owner role. And now it found the other resources too. So let's let's go into the resource group and look at the resources here. So it has provisioned everything here, uh, the the web app and the app service plan. Uh, if we go into access control, we should see the role as well. Click on role assignments, and uh, I'm already the owner of this because it's inherited from my subscription. But here's the one that was from the blueprint. It scoped to this resource group and it put myself as an owner. Okay, if I go back into the resource group here, we can take a quick look at the web app. So if I browse it, we can see that we've successfully deployed a web app using Azure Blueprints. All right, let's go back into the presentation. So, getting near the end here, but let's just review what we've done. We have deployed a web app using Azure Blueprints in the click of a button, and it only took a couple of minutes, which is very fast. And this is a very repeatable process. You can repeat it over and over again. So it's, uh, that's good. And uh, every time you do that, it's going to be the same environment that's deployed because it's based off of the same Blueprint definition. So it's standardized too. All right, that's what I had. Uh, I hope it was informative and interesting. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, put them on Slack and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much.